And these are the types of ulcers that I would see in my wound center, pressure ulcers, diabetic foot ulcers, venous stasis ulcers, surgical wounds, flaps and grafts, arterial ulcers, and traumatic wounds. There are reasons why these types of sores happen. The injury is one reason, but why it doesn't heal, that's real. That's where we really have to think about, and if you just listen to this part, you won't need a doctor. You'll be able to, on your own, know what the problem is. And it's very simple. We all have internal ways of dealing with wounds. We went through that. Our body um, has intrinsic factors, and if they're not working properly so that adequate food, water, um, and oxygen are getting to the wound, then you're not going to heal in the three to four weeks. And then there are extrinsic factors, like pressure areas, um, structures uh, um, that impair our body from working properly. And in the later slide I'll explain how really those things happen because our intrinsic factors aren't working. So if you take somebody who's well nourished and they're sitting for a long period of time, they might not get a sore as opposed to somebody who isn't as well nourished. So what's important is although we look at extrinsic factors, you know, structure, um, where you're seating, how you're seating. It's really the intrinsic factors are everything in, in, in health, in general health. And so these are arterial disease, venous disease, arterial disease, you know our heart pumps blood to all areas of our body. And if you've got disease in your heart arteries, then you're not gonna get circulated oxygen there, right? Or protein or water. And venous disease is the other side of the circulation Believe it or not, it's not driven by the heart pump, it's driven by our muscle pump. And if something's wrong with your veins, then you're not going to be returning carbon dioxide, waste, water. And then what you'll have is fluid will start to leak out of the veins. And you'll get fluid collecting in the soft tissues. And when fluid collects, you get what's called lymphedema. And the other very important intrinsic factors I mentioned is nutritional deficiencies. Lung disease, obviously, if you can't breathe, you're not going to get oxygen, so that's simple. And then there's nerve impairment, and I like to say brain impairment. Nerve impairment, for example, spinal cord injury, MS, other neuropathies where one doesn't have sensation, so one can't feel pain, one can't feel the need to reposition. For those of you who are not spinal cord injured, as you're sitting here and you're falling asleep, you'll reposition yourself without thinking about it. People who don't have that ability because of that dysfunction, they won't, they'll have to remind themselves to reposition. Somebody who has, for example, Alzheimer's disease won't appreciate the need to eat or reposition. So these are people who have intrinsic problems that they have to be aware of that can lead to uh, wounds. Infection. I call it an extrinsic factor, even though when we have an infection, it's intrinsic, but we get it because we're not healthy. If our immune systems are intact and we're doing the right things and our intrinsic systems are, I mean, you have a room full of people here and somebody comes in with a cold, probably two people will get it and the other people won't. There's something about our intrinsic nature, our immune system, when it's healthy, we can fight. And the same thing with pressure and repetitive trauma friction, shear, and moisture. If our intrinsic systems have a nervous system that, that's working, we won't, we won't be um, affected by these problems. So our view of wounds that don't heal is different than what you might see at a wound care center. At a wound care center, they're focused on the local environment of the non-healing wound. They treat the symptom. They debride the wound. They might offer a topical dressing, some type or kind. At our center, we're focused on these intrinsic factors and getting somebody generally healthy, teaching them about appropriate nutrition, the right ratio of carbohydrates, fat, and protein, how to make sure they're well hydrated, and to make certain that uh, any of these other root causes that can, that will go through, we can alter if we can. Some things we can't alter.